Welcome to Celebrate Recovery. We are so glad that you found us and that you are here. Celebrate Recovery is a safe place where you can connect with God and others to find hope, help, and healing. It is a Christ-centered 12-step program that values anonymity and confidentiality to help you recover from any type of hurt, hang-up, or habit. Here, you will find unconditional acceptance, support, guidance, community, and accountability. Celebrate Recovery is not a quick fix or a place to find a dating relationship. We encourage you to give us four to six weeks. Each week we will offer something different, and we want you to gain the entire CR experience before you determine if this is for you. We ask you to keep coming back because it does work if you work it. We know that your issues took time to develop, and because of that, they will not go away overnight. We also encourage you to attend other CR meetings, other secular recovery programs, and or have private counseling. In Celebrate Recovery, we want you to experience healing and recovery from any type of hurt, hang-up, or habit. But what is a hurt, hang-up, or habit? A hurt, hang-up, or habit is anything that hinders your walk with God. A hurt is a life experience that damaged your heart or an offense against you that crippled your ability to deal with the world in a healthy way. It is something that may have twisted your view of yourself, of God, or of other people. A hang-up is a roadblock that keeps you from progressing further in God's plan for your life. They are often shaped by some bent thinking you may have received as a child or some unhealthy attitude you may have adopted as a means of coping with life's challenges. A habit is an unhealthy pattern that started as a perceived remedy for a problem in your life but turned into a chronic bad behavior or addiction. Habits are what you've run to when things are tough or unmanageable, even though the habit continually leads to trouble in your life. At Celebrate Recovery, we have guidelines that we must follow during small groups. We have these five guidelines to ensure a safe and productive small group meeting. Guideline number one, keep your sharing focused on your own thoughts, feelings, and actions. This means your own, not your spouse's, significant others, or family members' hurts, hangups, and habits. Focusing on yourself will benefit your recovery as well as those around you. Stick to I or me statements and not you or we statements. This way, you will be speaking in terms of your own experience. Guideline number two, there is no crosstalk. Crosstalk is when people engage in conversation excluding others. Each person is free to express feelings without interruptions. While someone is sharing, we will not make distracting comments, ask questions, or speak to another member of the group. Crosstalk also includes responding to what someone has shared during your own time of sharing. Crosstalk interrupts feelings. Remember, there is healing in tears. Guideline number three, we are here to support one another, not fix each other. This keeps us focused on our own issues. We do not give advice, solve someone else's problems, or offer book or counselor referrals during the time to share. For the duration of this meeting, no one is to act as a licensed counselor, psychologist, or therapist, as Celebrate Recovery groups are not designed for this. Guideline number four, anonymity and confidentiality are basic requirements. What is shared in this group stays in this group. The only exception is when someone threatens to injure themselves or others. We are not to share information from this group with anyone. This includes our spouse, significant other, family members, friends, or coworkers. This also means that we do not discuss what is shared in the group among group members. This is called gossip. Guideline number five, offensive language has no place in a Christ-centered recovery group. We ask that you please watch your language. The Lord's name is not to be used inappropriately. Graphic descriptions are best shared one-on-one -on -one with a sponsor or accountability partner and should be avoided in a group setting. If anyone feels uncomfortable with how specific someone is being while sharing, please indicate so by raising your hand. The speaker will then respect your boundaries by being less specific in description. In order to avoid potential triggers that could cause someone to want to act out, we will also avoid mentioning specific foods, drinks, websites, or medications. Thank you in advance for honoring these guidelines throughout the meeting. Think of recovery like you were on a sports team. You are playing with a bunch of teammates that are playing the same sport as you and ultimately you all have the goal to win the game. You pass them the ball and they pass you the ball. You help them and they help you. They can become some of your very best friends. The people on your sports team are like your accountability team. Your accountability team are people of the same gender who you can encourage and they can encourage you. You can hold them accountable and they can also hold you accountable in specific areas such as temptations, building new habits, stopping old habits, having a daily quiet time, and the list goes on and on. They could have the same issues as you, but that's not necessary. 
and they can be at any point in their recovery journey. They could have just started recovery, or they could have been here for a while, and either one works. Just like a sports team, we encourage you to have multiple people on your accountability team. A sponsor is someone who would be like your coach on the sports team. They will be the ones helping you call the plays, but not running the plays for you. They will encourage you to get stronger, stretch you in different areas, and they will give you different exercises to complete. Your sponsor will be someone of the same gender as you who has worked through at least step nine of their own recovery. You will be required to find your own sponsor. This is someone that you will call, text, and initiate meeting in person on a regular basis. They can help hold you accountable for things and will be willing to confront you in love when needed. A sponsor is a good source of encouragement and someone who can pray for you and will also be available to help you in a time of crisis or a potential relapse. The sponsor will help guide you through the 12 steps, so it is a requirement to have a sponsor during your step group. Recovery is not meant to be done alone, and you are not alone any longer. Dinner and Solid Rock Cafe are great places to talk to people and get to know them better, exchange numbers with people that you feel comfortable with, and reach out to them during the week. Sometimes newcomers come to celebrate recovery and they're a little bit skeptical. They'll ask us, how can just sitting around talking about my problems with other people help my recovery? Shouldn't there be a trained counselor making suggestions or giving advice? If a person needs a trained counselor or professional assistance, they should get that help. But Celebrate Recovery is different. In Celebrate Recovery, the program itself is the counselor. So the real question is, first, how does the program work? And secondly, why does it work? First of all, in Celebrate Recovery, we aren't just sitting around talking about our problems. Rather, Celebrate Recovery guides us along a path of 12 steps that help us change our lifestyle. That's how CR works. And at the same time, we're learning eight principles that help us improve the way we think. That's why CR works. This chart illustrates the process. CR combines the 12 steps with the eight principles to lead a person through what is essentially four stages of recovery both in the things you do and in the things you think. Let's look a little closer. In the first three steps we address reality by admitting that we really do have thoughts and actions that need to change. At this point we also begin to realize we are powerless to make those changes ourselves. After all, if we could change ourselves, we would have done it a long time ago, right? So we look for help elsewhere, in a higher power. That would be Jesus Christ as he's revealed in the Bible. Along with these first three steps, we also learn two principles that teach us humility. Humility means we begin to see ourselves as we truly are. With humility comes reconciliation or the opportunity to get right with God. In the second stage of our recovery, steps four, five, and six, we identify both the good and the bad attitudes and behaviors in our lives and determine where we would like to see some changes. This is where the real work begins. At the same time, principles three and four teach us to be vulnerable. You know, human. Vulnerability helps us to reconcile with ourselves. We stop fighting with ourselves like the Apostle Paul described in Romans 7, where he just couldn't seem to get his personal life in sync with his spiritual life and forgive ourselves so we can leave old habits and attitudes behind and move on to a better lifestyle. In the third stage, we recognize that recovery is not just about me. Here we face the reality that, because we're flawed, we have hurt people around us. We will always be flawed, but that doesn't mean we have to act on those flaws. So now we're working on living a better life so we will be more lovable to the people around us and we try to restore relationships we've damaged or broken over the years. Learning honesty is the key. If we're still living the same old lifestyle, any attempts to apologize or rectify a wrong will be meaningless. But if people can see our honest efforts to change, they will be much more willing to let us restore those broken relationships. The next three steps describe the rest of our lives. 
Our bad habits aren't like diseases we can cure and forget. They're more like a bad knee or a weak heart. They're part of our lives, both socially and spiritually. That's why we'll always have to work in our recovery. In the final analysis, Celebrate Recovery is about learning self-control and living well. In these steps, we celebrate our recovery by expressing our gratitude to God. We continue to watch our lives carefully, making additional refinements as God reveals our more subtle flaws that perhaps we were not even aware of when we started this journey. We also establish and maintain appropriate worship activities such as prayer, Bible study, and church attendance. Finally, because of our gratitude, we jump at the opportunities to serve others. It's time to give back. So now we can see that Celebrate Recovery is based on the development of four key attitudes. Humility, vulnerability, honesty, and gratitude. By combining these attitudes with the 12 action steps, we achieve the four life goals of reconciliation with God, reconciliation with self, reconciliation with others, and giving back. A Christ-centered recovery program like Celebrate Recovery is, first and foremost, about recovering a relationship with God. Everything else is secondary. If you've come to Celebrate Recovery seeking an escape from the consequences of past actions or, perhaps, hoping for a better way of living, start by seeking a relationship with God. All the good things that come with recovery come as a benefit of that relationship. In recovery, we know we're still just flawed people, but we're also beginning to realize just how much God loves us. We will never be perfect, but we can cry out every day, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. This is how we celebrate recovery. And that's how and why Celebrate Recovery works. It's a guided process of personal rehabilitation for both the mind and the lifestyle.